Good evening. Welcome to the program. Coming up, Buddy Martin Show on a Tuesday night. A little baseball going on, a little this, a little that. It's a pick them up Tuesday. It's always good to be with David Whitley, and we'll ask him, among the other things, is there a good vibe out there in spring football right now? And this question, why are women's sports so darn popular right now? Wow. Don't worry about the popularity of college sports as long as they have women's basketball. Amazing. David Whitley right around the corner on the Buddy Martin Show. Stay tuned. He'll be right here. I'm again for Buddy Martin. Call him up and tell him what you're thinking. But be kind because he's doing the best he can. Better. Stronger. Faster. Mama says that alligators are ornery because they got all them teeth but no toothbrush. What if the voice calls while you're gone? Take a message. <laughs> Bye. You ready, champ? I'm ready for this my whole life. I'm incapable of small talk. <laughs> but that's why you love me, right? Kind of intimidating to be in the presence of so many great athletes. Welcome to the program. I'm Buddy Martin. That's why it's called the Buddy Martin Show. I couldn't do it without my great friends, though. It's, I'm so lucky to have such outstanding. There are more than guests or like co-hosts. Among them, David Whitley. We're going to get him in just one second. I've been you. Gators leading FA, Florida A&M, 9-7 last time I checked. Why is that a big deal? Well, they just have tough times with weekday games, and this would be a nice win. Jack. Cacleon just hits one to the moon. Um, also, if you care about it, Razor one in 5-1, and Lankford has got one hit tonight. So keep you up to speed. But mostly here with David, it's somewhat rhetorical and whimsical, and we just like to sort of meander out there and see what the topics are. And I'm sure David's got a million funny jokes to tell us right now. Right, David? <laughs> uh, yeah, first walk to the bar. <laughs> <clears throat> Why the long face? He said, well, I'm a Gator fan. No, no. no. The horse is, the horse walked into the bar and it's a long face. <clears throat> yeah. So how are you, David? It's good to, good to see you and talk to you again. Well, it's always good to be seen and talked to, especially mm-hmm. by you. I'm glad mm-hmm. they didn't name anybody Buddy Martin show because it'd be pretty silly if it was like, a, I, I, I might've gone with the Johnny Carson show. Just for <sighs> You think? Well, maybe that, maybe that might be a little too far back. Maybe you're just saying yeah. David Letterman. More people would know Johnny Carson. But, they uh, would know that is. But, they didn't know actually, who David Letterman is, let alone Johnny Carson. I think you ought to go with the Taylor Swift show. Now that I could do. Mm-hmm. You See, could pull it off. Speaking of Taylor Swift, this enormous popularity of women in the last couple of months I don't know, David, you're kind of a guy who likes to look at things like this and measure them and find out if there's something we had missed in the past. But if you're worried about college sports activity and and, and the popularity of the sports, just look to women's basketball. My goodness, David. It's it's just a phenomenon I, I don't know if we're ready for, and it's not over now. What we saw the other night, we'll get to that in a minute. Just unbelievable stuff from Caitlin Clark, especially. So we'll talk about that. And while we're doing this, I want you to think about who is the most popular American athlete right now? Who is? Don't want to answer it right away. I'd like to get some of your thoughts. I've been looking into this for the last 24 hours, and it's kind of curious. And and particularly the amateur athletes, so-called, because they're none of those anymore, the college athletes, whatever, so who are the names of the past women you remember who were so popular? And where does this group stand? Because what we're seeing now, David, we're seeing numbers like we've never seen in any college sports, let alone women's. Oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I guess I'm like everybody else. I got the, the uh, five-alarm email from ESPN today saying, ESPN scores greatest uh, ratings ever for this. And I was, I was like, well, 
I mean, yeah. ESPN didn't score it. You know, yeah. uh, LSU and Iowa scored it. ESPN yeah. was just fortunate enough or wise enough to have the rights to it. Right. It's and, lucky and, enough. Yeah. Uh, so. It wasn't like people were saying, hey, I got to watch ESPN tonight. I wonder what's on. No. <laughs> I mean, it was the other way. So it says, what channel is the game on? Exactly. Uh, yeah. And it, in a sense, it's catching lightning in a bottle, but I think that there is some, that the, 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 the lightning will be quite this intense after Caitlin Clark goes, but I think that she has helped raise the, the level and just the consciousness of the entire game a lot higher than it was. And now people are looking more towards the game and they're looking for other stars. Like, you know, now the, these, I mean, you used to be able to, if you ask somebody 10 years ago, I mean, maybe it was five years ago, you know, name me, name me uh, three women's mm-hmm. basketball players. And they'd go, um, Rebecca Lobo, mm-hmm. uh, Rebecca Lobo and uh, maybe Cheryl Miller. Wasn't she once you Reggie's brother kind of yeah, thing? Exactly. Yeah. And, like, yeah. yeah, and and nobody paid much attention to. I mean, you got to be honest. I mean, I, I went to a, a Final Four, a couple of Final Fours like twenty years ago, uh, women's Final Fours, and you know it was it was you know a tree falling in the woods. I mean, there were there were, I mean, they, they were played. One, I think one, one was actually in, in uh, maybe in Hartford and in UConn. So there's a big Connecticut turnout and Connecticut was winter mall back then, mm-hmm. but I mean, it was just popular in, in about a handful of outposts, you know, Tennessee, of course, the Pat summit had it going for a, a long time. In fact, you know, uh, Gino Ariema at UConn and, mm-hmm. and Stanford and other places, but you know, the play, it was, you know, frankly, it was a lot like Florida, which, you know, p- people paid some attention if they won, but generally it was like, eh, okay. Not really. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, which sort of you know, brings an interesting point. You know, it used to be that I think fans didn't really care, uh, except for the few hardcores, if mm-hmm. if the women's basketball team didn't do well. It's just like, oh, you know, mm-hmm. but now I, I think there, there, there's pressure because you see what it's become a thing. Yeah. And people see what's going on and say, well, why can't that be us out there? You know, mm-hmm. and, uh, and and I mean, that's a good thing. Because you know what I'd say, you know, a, a rising tide lifts all boats. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and you know, of course, of course, the whole genesis of that goes back fifty years. The whole Title IX thing, and you know, it, it's taken fifty years. I mean, this is a long-term project. Get mm-hmm. to this point, you know, it's sort of like like soccer in the USA. I mean, I remember back about the same time Title IX. It was, Man. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, the, the what was it, the NASL and and you know the Pele and and big big to do and the Tampa Bay Rowdy and then the people were saying it's arrived it's arrived so, well you're about 40 years too soon making that declaration yeah, yeah. Just, I, I remember that quite well because I was living in New York and Warner Brothers owned the Cosmos yeah and I was a sports editor of the New York Daily News and we covered them but we didn't really you know feature them yeah and my boss said well so and so the chairman of the board of Warner wants to have lunch with you okay really Mm -hmm. at that time Warner was the biggest communications company in the world Mm -hmm. and so i said okay so i went over to the big offices over there in the brown building went to the gourmet dining room i was met by the chairman and his associate and pr guy we had lunch and we talked and i said okay i'm here to learn about soccer you know i I admit i'm not a huge fan of soccer and or no Mm -hmm. more and they put a spiel on they they said look at the crowds we're having we're going eighty thousand in the Meadowlands, yeah. Okay, so we 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 got data that says that soccer is overtaking baseball. There are more people playing soccer mm-hmm. than little league baseball. I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, I'd love to see that data because I can make a story out of that. You know, so that it says, yeah. we'll get that stuff for him or whatever. You know, so yeah. I never got it. But anyway, they were drawing eighty thousand, but the half of them were free tickets. Yeah, you know, and um, it turns out that it was a blip on the screen, and soccer was trying to make a breakthrough. And the Tampa Bay Rowdies, you remember them? They they did well too, exactly. And so we thought we saw a soccer revolution, but we did not. And mm-hmm. you're saying they were 40 years too early. But with this, getting back to the women's thing, I I was going to wait and do this later, but long for thinking and talking, we'll be joined shortly by Kyle Curtis from Gator Bay. Um, what is there about these women, particularly we saw last night, um, in, in the LSU Iowa game, particularly Caitlin Clark, uh, that has so fascinated America 
And what do you think about it when you see them play? Well, when I see Caitlin Clark play, I think, man, can she shoot? She's Steph Curry. You know? And and whether you're a, a, a male or a female, you know, just even, you know, people have always – at least the, the male chauvinist pigs among us. So I said, well, mm-hmm. they just don't play through the athleticism that do it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that's granted. But, but uh, when, when a guy sees anybody out there jacking it up from 30 feet, 25 mm-hmm. feet and making that, that, that's something that they can respect everybody. Cause that's hard to do. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and everybody can relate to that. Cause you get, you know, everybody sees Caitlin and says, I, you know, I couldn't do that. I couldn't, mm-hmm. you know, at least that they're honest with themselves. Mm-hmm. And so that in general respect. And, you know, it it has all the all the things that you want. I mean, it, it's it's sort of the the old Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, yeah. Uh, Hick. You know, you got you got the the Hick from French Lick was Bird, and now you got mm-hmm. sort of the I don't want to call them Hicks from Iowa because that's sort of Sarah. But you know, no. I mean, it, it is they, they I mean they, they look like a bunch of farm. You know, they just came you know out, out of the cornfield with Shoeless Joe Jackson there, and they're wandering onto a basketball court. You know, they built it and they will come and. And, you know, and then you have just this you know, generational player in Clark that everybody has glommed on to for good reason. And, and then you got you know, what you've had, you know, is characters, too, which everybody relates to. And you got Angel Reese, who, who yeah. you know, she's very polarizing. Black, you know, black, black hat. Black and, and, mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and a lot of people don't like her, you know, mm-hmm. because the whole, the whole thing last year with with the rivalry and, and supposedly taunting Kay, Caitlin Clark and all that. And that got people excited. And then you throw in the whole Kim Mulkey factor, you know? Yeah. And, there's a story. Yeah. Yeah, is, yeah. yeah. And, and how, I mean, and, and she has become, and become a bigger story, you know, than the game the last couple of weeks, almost mm-hmm. just with her, her, her battles with the media. And I tell mm-hmm. you what, when you pick a battle with the media, that gets people's attention and it makes you a hero. Mm-hmm. In ninety-eight percent of people's uh, people's eyes, just because yeah, there, there, there's no easier target mm-hmm. than, than, than saying low I'm hanging fruit. Low areas. hanging fruit. Yeah, right. get that man, oh, yeah. stick it to him, baby. Come it's on. like everybody. Yeah. They may not know anything about about the game or, or what you're talking, but they're just going, "You go, girl. You show yeah. them up." Yeah. You know? Somebody had a great line about that because she she shot that Washington Post story full of holes, although she didn't shoot it all full of holes. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot to that we don't know, and I'm not going to get into that because it takes forever. It's an unbelievable story, but she did slow him down, although another paper came out and bashed her. But the bottom line is someone said she did, She should have done a good job on Caitlin Clark as she did on the watch, defending herself in the Washington Post because you know, yeah. she obviously hated on Clark. And, and you see what she said. She said, boy, I'm girl, I'm glad to see you get out of here. She told her after yeah. the game. Uh, yeah. All right, let's do this. Take a break. Kyle's standing by. I want to get your guys' to thoughts about this. I can't seem to get enough talking about Caitlin Clark. I mean, again, and think about this. Two questions. If I said to you, who is the most popular female athlete today? Um, and then I'd ask you, who is Haley Ashburn? I bet you or Kyle can't count. Don't, look, don't Google it. Look it up and okay. see, and we'll talk about that coming up next. First, tell you a little more about them. Um, North Central Florida's newest premier independent diagnostic testing facility, Titan MRI. Excited to let you know that Titan MRI is now open and serving the greater Gainesville and North Central Florida area, focused on you, the patient, having a great customer service experience. They know most people live a be the busy life and they have regular business hours, but they'll also make some special hours available to you. You can get a special appointment. By contacting them, they can do nights and weekends if that meets your, your needs better. So check them out. Um, their MRI equipment is very modern, and, and one of the things that they have is the larger boards, and it doesn't mean you're as cramped in there and you're going to get as claustrophobic as some of us do in those things. So check them out, tightenmri.com. All right, let's go get our friend in uh, in the green room and see what he's up to uh, and uh, talk a little, little baseball. Don't know what the final score was, but uh, – and talk a little uh, about whatever is on Kyle's mind and get back to the subject of these female athletes and who is Haley Ashburn. You guys know? No, I can't tell I you the Gator final, though. I personally don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, Haley, go ahead. I'm going to the last up. name. Ashburn, like Ritchie. All right. Ashburn. Yeah. Ashburn, yeah. 
Hmm. You'd never get it. I, I would never have gotten it either. Okay. So, yeah, but, I, I know, uh, you know Haley Mills. Um, yeah, right. And, uh, Jack Haley. Yeah. Yeah. Man. yeah uh, that, that's the extent of my Haley knowledge. Yeah. Well, just to, just to get that uh, straightened out, she is a climber. Said to be among the most popular women athletes in America. I'm sure you have all her books at home. Um, I mean, good, God bless her and all that, but Haley Ashburn? Good me. Uh, Kyle, who would you say the most popular athletes are um, female, aside from the ones we saw on TV last night? Um, the first ones that come to mind for me, obviously, with the Olympics coming up, I would probably say Simone Biles is yeah. up there. Um, yeah. And then probably, I mean, even though I know that she uh, is a – I, I'm pretty sure she's retired, but it's probably Serena and Venus Williams yeah. in the in the tennis tennis realm. Yeah. Um, those are probably the first ones that come to mind. Maybe Danica Patrick uh, yeah. breaking the NASCAR yeah. ground. So All those, good. Are, those, those are probably the first four that come to mind. But obviously, um, what Caitlin Clark's doing right now is incredible. the The game last night was just, I mean, it, it's it's just insane. Put it in context, David. Listen, here's the deal. Here's the numbers. All right. LSU Iowa's averaged 12.3 million viewers or more than every women's college basketball game ever, every ESPN college basketball game ever, every Major League Baseball game last season, every NHL game last season, every Major League Soccer game last season, every NBA game last season except one, every college football regular season last season except one. That is amazing. Mm-hmm. Yes, and you know it, it's been a perfect storm for you know with I mean th- these were it's too bad that last night wasn't the uh, the championship yeah, game. Yeah, well, yeah. So these, these are the two. I mean, th- it would have been everybody would have just been. You had, in fact, I I think in a, in a way they ought to just pack it up and go on. Although you know, th- I mean, there's some great. It's really a good final, a great final four when you look at UConn and all they've done. You know, coach. I mean, you know, not, they would love nothing better for for you know the Godfather mm-hmm. Gino to come back and and reclaim you know the evil empire reclaiming its its throne, mm-hmm. you know, from South Carolina. And you know, that's another team that really has established an identity, yeah. uh, a national identity. And yeah. and and you know, you can see that's the one that you know, really Caitlin Clark against anybody will get. I mean, right? Caitlin Clark against you, me, Kyle, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Franz. <laughs> you know, <laughs> And Lauren would get yeah. really great ratings right now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's great. You know, uh, in a way, you sort of you sort of fear that, that I, I don't know how they're going to you know how you're going to top this next year. It's going to be hard, but that that doesn't mean it will be bad because you, you know it's sort of like it's sort of like well you know it's the day after Christmas. How are you going to top Christmas? You can't. But yeah. I think that people it you know, this is just in, further ingrained March Madness the the women's side in people's minds. And they're getting a lot more public. Like, if you notice, I mean, ESPN has, has given the last couple of years as much coverage on its website to women's basketball as men's. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that is because they don't have the men's tournament anymore. They have the women's tournament. True, true. So that's that's why they do. And they, you know, in, in a way, it, I've, I've clicked up some days and, and, and just gone on. And, you know, it's the first round and their lead story, their lead pictures and everything will be about first round women's games between teams that you know, I've never heard of as opposed to. And I'm going like, all right, you're like, I get the whole thing. And talk, but, you know, you're really doing it. You know, but let's be real here. But now it deserves that top billing yeah. right away. But yeah, so they sort of, you know, in, in a way force force fed it on people. But people are eating it because, it, you know, now we're to, you know, to, to stretch the metaphor. We're, we're to the really good meal. You know, it's, it's legit. Been, it's legit, yeah. Kyle. It's, it's legit. And how are people on campus taking? And how does this uh, bode for Kelly Ray Finley and other women coaches there? Do you feel? Do you hear any talk about it on campus, Kyle? Yeah, I mean, uh, just you know, especially uh, I know you guys like to talk about like just being in the fraternity house and um, obviously stuff like that. So you know, we all love watching sports and stuff like that. So being able to you know just watch the game, stuff like that, you know, seeing, seeing different guys bet on it. Um, you know, it's, it's really cool. Just, you know, we had a watch party in the living room. So I, I don't know, I think 10 years ago, I don't know if something like that would have happened. So, um, you know, having people sense. like, yeah, having yeah. people like, you know, Caitlin Clark. The other friends would come over and made fun of you guys. 
So. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I, I mean, and it's, you know, and people are actually watching it, taking it seriously and realizing, you know, these girls are actually could probably beat all of us <laughs> very easily. Yeah. So um, it, it was it's it's definitely cool to see. Um, and I think that, you know, it puts Kelly Ray Finley more on the map and hopefully brings more students out in the future, um, you know, that you showing that Caitlin Clark can do all these things and, you know, bring a school together. So hopefully, hopefully this uh, kind of motivates the student body to, you know, show, um, you know, even more support for the women's basketball program and just women's sports in general. I know that, you know, the gymnastics meets have been sold out for most of mostly all the season and uh, everyone's super excited for that postseason too. So I think that women's sports in general is, is trending and it's uh, super exciting and just good for the uh, university culture uh, as a, as a, as a full. Yes. But David and Kyle, will we see a day in our lifetimes, at least yours, not mine. There'll be a female football player. That's the big question. There have been kickers and a few, but will there ever, will we ever see that day? The athletes are getting so big. I, I think in time we will, I think we'll begin to see them. Uh, the way the women are playing basketball is physical kind of game they're playing. I don't know. You know, it sounds crazy now, but it was sounding crazy. Did that many people yeah. watch women's basketball? What do you think, Kyle? Me personally, I, I think – I don't know if I could see that the women and men's game integrating for football, but I could mm-hmm. see a women's football league forming and kind of, you know, the kind of right. making strides and stuff. But um, I don't know. I just I, – I feel like, you know, it would, it would be – it would be still a massive – I don't know. I don't know if that would be right uh, morally. If I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to say on it. But um, yeah, I could see, I could see that a woman's like football league starting and that getting a lot of attraction and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. like you said, I could, I could totally see a kicker or something like that. Um, totally, maybe uh, being in, hopefully, high D one or something like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Well, we'll see about that. Speaking of which, football. I don't know how much you guys have had a chance to absorb what Billy Napier has been saying in the football practice and picking up the nuances because let's face it, that's what it is. We don't get in a lot of face time with people, but Billy's talked a lot lately. And I'm told, David, maybe you know this, he had about three or four minute off the record session with the reporters on Saturday mm-hmm. during the press conference in which he talked very boldly about how liking his football team. Now, I don't mean to say there's been a great transformation, but I keep seeing things like this, and I thought, okay, I know this guy. I know he didn't say much like this. Apparently today after practice, Billy Gonzalez, or during the session, said Graham Murch is one of the best football players he's ever been around. Now, that, that's saying something, David. Oh, yeah, and uh, as far as the off-the-record thing, I, I I could tell you, but they would have to kill me. So I, so I can't tell <laughs> But no, no, he, he did, he, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's genuinely, you know, he's pumped on, on what he sees out there. He think, you know, big picture wise, I think he feels he finally has everything in place uh, after, you know, two, two years of nonstop work. All, as he says, all the systems are in place and now he can just be a coach, uh, at what, which is more than just coaching, but you know, there's the NIL said, and, and this is some of the off the record, you know, just when he came here, he knew it was a mess, but he didn't realize how big of a mess pretty much. Uh, and, and then you throw the, the whole NIL revolution that came along and, and nobody knows what's happening there. So it became even, you know, even more plates to spin. And, you know, he said he's made mistakes along the way. I mean, he didn't really say anything that everybody didn't know, but he's, he's honest, he's frank about it. Uh, you know, and he, at one point I, I, Asked him, you know, do, do you feel you've been treated fairly here? You know, a medium fans. He said, he said, absolutely. You know, says, says, you know, we, we've, uh, I, I wish we could have given people, you know, better stuff to cheer for and stuff to write about. It just hadn't happened yet. But, you know, he, he thinks that things are, have, have turned the corner. And as one guy said, you know, he says, so it's like the, the airplane is built. Now just you got to make it fly. Mm-hmm. And he, I mean, yeah, I mean, as far as Mertz goes, he, he, he just can't say enough good thing. And Gonzalez, too. And I mean, so I, I, I see it. You know, and and Kyle's seen it everyday practice too. I mean, the, the guy, the guy is not just you know a good kid, but he he is the leader of that team. You know, he sets the tone for everything, and he he holds people accountable. And you know, wh- whatever they do this year, Gray Mertz is going to have you know a big hand in it. 
you know, uh, and, and anybody who's saying, well, you know, you know, it lag, lagway might steal the job, you know, that there, there's no way that's going to happen. Unless, you know, lagway is, is just phenomenal, but he's a long way from being ready, but they're still going to use him in certain instances to take advantage of his, of his raw skills, but they're still very raw. But yeah, I mean, you're right. Uh, they, they are up, they see, you know, and of course, you know, Billy puts numbers on everything. He says, you know, we had like 20,000 snaps on this team last year, returning, you know, snaps. And we're up to 41,000 snaps now, mm-hmm. experience, all the experience they got, you know. And, and so he, he mm-hmm. sees it getting better. And and I think we all think it's going to be a better product. You know, of course, then just the question is, you know, is <laughs> will, will the product translate into wins on the field? Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, uh, Kyle, uh, you went out there. Do you feel any different? I mean, you're a big fan. You you openly state that you cheer for the Gators, and you should. It's your school. Um, a lot of what I've always felt about when you're covering a team is not just what's said, but how you feel about what you're seeing, the vibe you get around the team. Sometimes it's different for people. How are you seeing it? How are you feeling about it? Do you think there'll be marked improvement or just – more the same. What's your? I know it's early, but give us give us your thoughts on that. Yeah. The, the, so what I've seen more about this team that I've seen probably more so than I uh, Billy Napier's first year is the fact that I feel like this this is more of a team. Um, you know, a lot of these guys, you know, like David was saying, they have a lot of snaps. Um, they've been playing together a lot. Uh, they're all starting to form. You know, the, the lifelong bonds that you know that you form in college. So. Um, I think, you know, that that means something, especially in the college landscape, um, you know, being able to play for, you know, the person next to you and stuff like that. So I think, you know, being, a, it, you know, everyone has great talent and stuff like that. It's just being able to utilize the talent to the best of its abilities and translate that into wins. Um, but in the in the case of Billy Napier, um, you know, there's there's no more excuses. Uh, he's been here three years. It's the third year of him coaching, third year of NIL. Um, p- other people are starting to figure it out. You're at one of the top universities in the country for athletics and academics. Um, so, you know, I think that, you, well, like David said, that everything is trending in the right direction. Um, and I think that, you know, everyone's bought into this whole offseason and being able to have a leader um, the caliber of Graham Mertz, who has the experience, um, you know, uh, not only at Florida, but at Wisconsin, um, knows what it's like to, you know, seeing a winning program. And, um, you know, I, I'm optimistic, but I feel like that we've said that probably the past two or three years. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I am optimistic. Um, but yeah, but if you can be optimistic on April 2nd, you win can to be optimistic, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm a. Gl- I've always been a glass half full guy. I don't know, <laughs> right? Because I mean, there's there's enough there to 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 be optimistic without looking like you're Pollyanna. I mean, right. there, there are a lot of there, there's some good talent coming back, and I think it'll be a much uh, better product, you know. And you know, of course, one one question is, you know, the special teams. They just they just got to you know, no more of these Keystone Cops type. So, well, that may be too old, too old of a reference for Kyle, but you know, just quality <laughs> central at routines. I'm and trying. It, I'm trying. Yeah, it's okay. You know, it's a, it's okay to 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 make mistakes out there, but they you know they can't make those kind of mistakes. Hmm. You know, where everybody can yeah. come and say, I'm I just I, I don't want to see another year of Florida beating Florida. I I can live okay, that's if, fair. if if Florida mm-hmm. goes out there and you know plays a clean game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe loses a play, a, a couple plays, but I, you know, it, like, like you said, just not putting enough guys out there, not giving your guys the best shot, it, you know, blown coverages, wide open plays. I don't want Florida to beat Florida this year. Yeah. And, you know, he, he, he's addressed that with, uh, you know, bringing in a special teams coordinator who, who's, whose name I forget, you know, but from New England, uh, who's, who's worked with their, I'm sorry, the, the game changer coordinator, as they say here, um, as an aside, I saw today where where Warren Sapp for that too. Yeah. Yeah. Warren Sapp has been hired. Uh, Dion has hired Warren Sapp, coach. And I read I, I read the story, and I get he's going to be a GA, and it and his title is something like uh, senior uh, quality analyst advisor. Okay, you know? it, it makes yeah. it sound like he's working for for NASA. Like <laughs> and I said, man, Warren, they're making Warren, up titles. I, I, I know this boy between between Sapp and Dion. 
You know, nobody. That's going to be the loudest coaching staff, and just those two right there. Those are two uh, very close. Yeah. yeah, I think Dion's actually handling pretty well, all things considered. But um, yeah, and the, the, the back to the issue of, uh, of of fundamentals that we're trying to get to about what's better. I did notice an emphasis in the conversation and some of the drills on tackling. And Billy made it a, a point in his Saturday press conference to talk about how much better the tackling had been, how much time they've spent on it, which is obviously ob- something needs to be fixed. But if they could fix tackling to where they get three stops a game on third down, you know, it'd be huge, Kyle. It'd be huge, just a small thing like that. Yeah, I mean, the third, the third down uh, defense last year, it's it's honestly so frustrating as a fan. I cannot imagine how frustrating it must be as a you know coach on that sideline mm-hmm. getting two stops, especially in a third and long situation. Mm-hmm. And then you know they break a break. A, they're just trying to get in a you know a better, not trying to turn the ball over or something like that. Get a punt off, and then they break a few tackles and get the first down. So um, you know I think that the, you know the staff has tried to address that. I know that Kelby Collins. Switch from defensive end to defensive line, yeah, yeah. and um, you know apparently there has been both positive feedback from Collins and uh, the staff from that. So I think that they are trying to kind of make strides in that direction to put uh, personnel in the right places. Um, I've heard a lot of great things from freshman uh, Miles Graham from B. Holtz. Uh, he's out the rest of spring, but um, they expect him to have an immediate impact on the defensive end. Uh, we obviously get Shamar James back, uh, Justice Boone. So, you know, there's a lot of guys on that defense who are going to be able to, um, you know, hopefully be able to uh, make make a force happen. It's just a matter of whether or not you want to get the guy on the ground. Um, so hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to kind of switch the script this year. Um, but, yeah, tackling it definitely should be on the number one top of the top of all the uh, defensive uh, assistance lists. And that's exactly the phrase that Billy used to describe the tackle improvement. We're getting the guys on the ground, yep. uh, which is what he wants. So that was obviously uh, – I think Nunnery now, it looks like he's not going to go on the portal, right? Right. Uh, so he's back. He could help some at linebacker. Um, they've got a couple other practice players that stood out this week in the reports I've read. I can't remember them right now. They're talking about how much the better the linebackers will be. And, of course, they got guys that are hurt. Um, I'm a big Derek Wingo fan. I think he's a terrific leader. Um, I know he's not physically a baller. I think you're looking for a real true um, Mike linebacker, a guy who can, you know, really st- stuff a hole. I'm not sure. I haven't seen the practices. David, have you? Well, I, I, you know, been out there for a couple of the quick windows, and then they had one that was uh, pretty open for the whole time. And that was pretty interesting. Uh it, and it seems like some days, and, and, and Billy was saying this other day, you know, the offense dominates, some days the defense dominates, which I, I think is good because if one was dominating the whole time, time you, you think that window has problems. Uh, so I think, you know, and, and we talk tackling. It's you know, The game comes down to two things, blocking and tackling, bo- blocking and tackling. And they didn't do either last year. You know, we've talked about tackling. On the blocking side, I think they feel a whole lot better about the ta- the two tackles that, that they have bought in. You know, the two grad transfers, uh, again, who's – I wish I had the roster in front of me. <laughs> but, uh, Kyle, can you help me out? Who, the, the two guys, pop quiz. Uh, one has hyphenated name. Uh, Devin – Bell. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, they, I think they're, they're, they, they've just plugged them in. I think Austin Barber coming will help too once he gets healthy. But what – what and and what Billy was saying, man, it, it gives them such link because now they are just, you know, Brandon like, Crenshaw Dixon. That's it, Brandon Crenshaw Dixon. Yes, and they, but they are just uh, huge across. It says he talks about length, length, which they didn't have. He feels really hurting last year at, and also agility at, at the at the tackle spot. And these two guys give because you know, he was saying, you know, across the line now we're like, you know, six seven, six eight, three forty, three sixty, three eighty. You're thinking, holy smoke! Yeah, uh, which back back to back, back to your question before this segment, Billy. When I see those guys, I, I see there. There's no way that a woman will ever be a football player unless it's because <laughs> it, it. You just don't appreciate the size of these human beings until They're you get massive. next to them. 
Yeah. And and that's just the start of it. You know, uh, e- even, you know, except for like, you know, uh, you know, just a, just a freaky kid like Trey Wilson, who's the size of, you know, of, of a, who's smaller than probably half the, the, you know, women's basketball player. But just from sheer size and girth and strength, you know, that, that it, you know, it's just it just from physical development. I mean, these guys are I mean, they, they are in the top, you know, top 10th of one percentile of humans. I mean, you have to be that way to play college football. And when you and when you see these offensive lines, I mean, it is I mean, even without their pads on. You know, it, it is like Mount Rushmore is just going by, you know, and uh, and they, I mean, so size will not be an issue with these guys. I'll tell you that. One. Another name I'm hearing, and we'll bring Lauren in too. Any names that pop in? Devin Moore, who I thought was a really good player until he got hurt. He's back and apparently will help the team a lot. The problem is we don't know what players are going to be on the field, and it's hard to, and then given the limited time we see them, we don't know. We're guessing. We're just guessing about what might happen. That's why I say it goes to the vibe. Do you feel like things are getting done? It does seem there's a little different tempo. It does seem that Billy talks a little more positive. It does seem that there are issues being addressed. The coaching staff moving around. And it turns back to one thing. The idea of what his comment may or may not have been in the, uh, off the record, I wasn't here. Um, I hate that phrase. You should have seen how bad things were when I got here. Every single coach could use that. And I liken that, and I've said it many times, when you have your TV broken and you bring a guy in and he looks at it and says, oh, man, I don't know how this TV's even operating, how this last guy had it set up. I'm surprised you got it on the air, you know. Or a plumber, you come in and you say, well, you're lucky your house not floating down the road. Well, it's horrible work done in this thing. I mean, I, I, the last guy in, the guy that Urban Meyer never put up with that. He never let his pl- coaches bash the previous regime and i understand a lot of it may be true but you know i mean and, and i do understand billy inherits a tough situation given the coach dan mullen who sort of quit on his team um but uh again i just want to say hey it is what it is it's work to be done let's go get it and uh mistakes were made let's see if we can fix it that's what they're there for to fix it fellas Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I don't think Billy, at least publicly, has has done a lot. Of, no, he has between the lines, but you know, he he, uh, you know, I, I don't. In fact, I, I don't recall the you know the names Mullen and and McElwain really crossing his lips that much. No, I'm sure know? that no, no one ever named a coach. Yeah. No one would ever name the previous coach. But yeah. it's been done before by a lot of right. people. Right. Right. Just, um, anyway, so let's do this. We got Lauren was saying about us got. You guys can hang for a minute. Can you hang for a minute, Kyle? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm, it's your Good world. Lord. I'm living in it. All right. We're going to go get uh, our friends at Melvin Law and come back and talk about it. Let's put it on the table. Where is this program? It's Mar- It's April 2nd. Calendar's running out. What's happening? Is it going to get any better? We'll talk to the guys about this next. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, you do a show where you ask a lot of questions. I've got one for you right now, okay, regarding – how do you know whether your case is being handled right and what to do about it? In medicine, you can get a second opinion if you're not satisfied with the doctor, doctor's opinion that they have. And do, do you have that in law? Can you do that in, 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 with lawyers? Yeah, buddy. As a matter of fact, we get quite a few calls from folks that uh, have signed up, particularly with the big box law firms that uh, they do a hell of a good job of uh, putting ads on TV, but after that, they don't really uh, measure up to the way we try to uh, create a client experience that's outstanding. And we're always willing to review a case and give a second opinion, just like with a doctor, because uh, not all law firms are created equal. I guess that's a normal thing. Just go to Melvin Law, Google it, and find out, and just give them a call and and like you say, if you come in, you get to see a Melvin. You don't get you don't get shuffled off to somebody else. You get to see a Melvin, and uh, that's good to know. All right, thanks very much, Jeffrey. And let's go to the Orange or Blue Room and see what our coach is working on tonight. What's he up to? I'm sure he's got his three deep charts out there and going over the program. He's going to tell us everybody that's doing anything good in Florida football practice. Good evening to you, Lauren. <laughs> How you doing? All right. How's it Another What's hotel? Up, yeah, I'm in. Uh, I'm in beautiful uh, Wilmington, Delaware. Uh huh. 
He's a rambling, gambling, traveling man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you talked about women's basketball, man. It didn't bring me, you know, let me. I let know. Me get well, it. I, I mentioned it. I mentioned Kelly. I mentioned it. Yeah. So let's go ahead and fill it up, brother. I know you got stuff to say. I, David and I had a long talk about it. Kyle chipped in some. We were trying to think of a, of a female athlete that's been this popular, who the last one was, and how impressed we were. With that game and the numbers speak for themselves. I don't understand. There's something going on, Lauren. What is it? I think it's uh, the one and done with with men's college basketball. That you know, a lot of it is you don't get to know the players anymore. You know, they're mm-hmm. they're in and out, and they, they they shuffle in and right to the NBA. And then the women's game has done a great job of, like you said, ESPN has done a great job of marketing itself and. And they got some people that that, that people want to see. I mean, you got the, the 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 Steph Curry, Iowa Steph Curry. I mean, you got you know Juju Watkins, who's you know Kobe Kobe esque, you know Kobe Bryant, and and then you got Don, who's you know a national treasure. You know, been 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 in the public eye for a long time. And I mean, I just you know, it's is is everybody's chips are in. And you know you got social media and all these things that that these young ladies could tap into, and and it's it's getting popular, man. It's it's a it's a big game, and you know all eyes will be on the women's game again this weekend, and you know it's just gonna be, I mean I think it's gonna keep going, and and you know like like you asked about Kelly, you know she had two girls playing tonight in the McDonald's All American game, one with a really good last name, so you know a lot of people are gonna be. T- Is it Martin? Uh, you know, Is her name Martin? No, yeah, oh, I think okay. it starts with an O. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, I think that that's that's where we are. So, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, you know, obviously Florida's got to, got some some wood to, to to grind and 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 some wood chipping to do to to catch up to some of those programs. But you know, getting getting top talent and you know, everybody talks about recruiting is the lifeblood. You know, they've been able to recruit well the last couple of years, and and hopefully it bodes well. You know, so. If I if I may, Lauren, that's a good point you made about how they come back because where there's some men's game last year, you know, Caitlin Clark, Angel, they would have gone to the NBA. Would, Absolutely. You know, right? but now, yeah. well, hey, you know, and this is an interesting rule where they can't go to the WNBA because you have to what play three years or four to to be eligible to be drafted. But plus, they would take a pay cut if they went to the WNBA. These girls, yeah, they are. They they both are going to take a pay cut. Yeah, that's that's for sure. But yeah, that's you know, why the Angels yeah. probably going to stay another year, I think. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah. So, um, and then I was going to say, um, I was I was going to throw a name out there, and I don't know if you threw it out there. I will say what what Caitlin Clark has done for women's basketball. If you want to go back, I think Mia Hamm mm, soccer would be would be one that that kind of ushered in that same kind of passion. I mean, it's kind of fell off for a lot of reasons here in the last ten years, but. From a lot, from about '96 to about 2010, I mean that was the predominant women's sport outside of track and field. Every four years, was was women's soccer, and Mia Hamm was was right there, you know, in the center of it. And and you know, if she was in this time with the way things are, she probably would have the same. I mean, they didn't have social media and those things back then. Internet had just jumped on the scene, so I think Mia Hamm is is up there as well. You know. I've never seen anything like this, so guys, I've never seen it. No, those are all interesting athletes, and they were really good and fun. But nobody moved the needle but like like Caitlin Clark. I mean, she moves the needle. Look at the numbers. Staggering, yeah. which that they do. I mean, now, I don't know if this will sustain or not, and it'd be interesting to hear Kelly Ray Finley's comments about it, Lauren, about what she thinks. Is this a real thing? Is women's basketball really part of this, or is it just a phenomenon – of these two athletes. And, and of course, let's not forget the big controversy with Kim Mulkey and what have you, the story around it. So I don't know. Um, I don't know. Will that last? I think it will. I mean, I think it's, it's, you got a lot of buy-in from a lot of, a lot of important people. Um, the SEC, for instance, has, has really, really put the, put the, the, the metal to it a little bit and really dropped some money into it. And, you know, in talking to Kelly, like I said, I think that's one of the things with with what with the kind of attention that this program could have here on campus, and then just you know all the games will be interesting should be for the Florida Gators mm-hmm. for a lot of reasons. I think they're going to be pretty decent, but they will have 
a little star power there to kind of kind of help things along. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think as long as the NCAA men operate under the same model, I, I think the women I think the women can sustain it because for a while they're going to be looking for the next Caitlin Clark. Right. The next Juju Watkins, um, there will be another girl that, you know, I mean, I know a lot of people get on Angel Reese, but I want to at least give her the benefit of doubt that I've seen her interact with the young people after the game and things like that. And, and she is very gracious with the, with the young kids, signing the autographs and taking the pictures and things like that. And I think there's a lot to be said for that. So, you know, as long as and she's not the only one, but as long as those girls continue to tap in. To, to these young girls that are starting to play more in the rec leagues and AU and things like that, I, I do think it's going to be, um, you know, I think it is. I think it is sustainable. Yeah, we are talking women's, women's basketball late in the night. I can't believe it. Yeah. Uh, well, let me, let's let's go to mention football. the men's final four. Well, let's get to it. It's my point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's talk 45 about minutes in, we get to the men's uh, night. Right, See, finally. This alone I know. I know. is a milestone in, in, uh, in broadcast – uh, well, long, long, as long as you brought it up, David, this shirt, bring it up. Ah, Let's go. Ah, I, hey, uh, you know, I, I love, you know, let me talk UConn, about this. lay State down for UConn, right? I, I, love, UConn. I love the wolf pack, you know. Yeah. And I, I, I'm getting those 83 vibes all over, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the yeah, cardiac, with, with, you know, with the big guy inside, you know, who who is, you know, he can really cash in on this because, it, and it's so funny, you know, a month ago, I mean, these this team was left for dead. I mean, no, and and the coach, he was on his way out, mm-hmm. and, and and no, nobody wanted to hire him. In fact, and, and and now it's like, I mean, the the guy, he's he's Dean Smith suddenly, you know, up mm-hmm. there, <laughs> and and in that team, every, everybody's having those eighty three flashbacks, and you know, even the, to, you know, the fifth anniversary, and and it's that that's a great story. But you know, and and UConn is just it seems so invincible. So mm-hmm. you know it. That that you know, the, the, anytime you have the David and Goliath aspect, that's good, you know. And and, and the other side, you know, Bama, you know, the, the team that couldn't stay on the court with the Gators, wow. so, you know, yeah. here they are in the Final Four, you know, yeah. uh, you know. And and uh, you know, I mean, so you, you wondered. You know, I, I guess Bama is now a, as I said, a basketball school. You know, now yeah, they're, 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 they're yeah. going. You know, they win this. You know, I, I get. You know, they're going to. Yeah, you know, uh, erect a, a statue of of uh, Nate Oates between Saban and the Bear. Yeah, did you hear Nate Oates? I really liked his comments. Did you guys hear him um, in his press conference talking about while well, you know Alabama's a football school and and he didn't run from it. He said, "Of course it is," and he said, uh, "I love it." I said, "I love football," um, and I you know I I love coach coach to be in the same building with Coach Saban. He said, "I have a whole list of quotes I've used." A lot of them from Coach Saban I used before I got here. A lot. He mm-hmm. said I was able to come here, shadow him, go on a road trip, pick his brain. He says this has helped me a great deal. And he says I would like, I would love it if Alabama could become one of the championship programs. Right now you got you got one guy who is the greatest coach of all eighteen sports. He said right here in the building. So I think his attitude is great in that regard. Would they make ten threes, Lauren, in the last second half? Shot at the lights yeah. out. Crazy. Yeah, I mean, you know, you look at, at NATO's. NATO's can coach. I mean, ain't no doubt about that. And, uh, you know, they, they've kind of, you know, I heard somebody arguing about positionless basketball and that kind of thing. But, you know, Alabama does have, have the ability to kind of play, you know, five out and still defend at a high level when they need to. And, uh, you know, they just got a lot of guys that – don't don't do necessarily anything great, but they do a lot of things good. And then they have Mark Sears, who's you know a, a, a you know a bulldog at point guard. And I mean, you know, it's one of, even in the game where Florida thumped him, you know, he had like two points at halftime. And then you look up at any game, he's got darn near thirty. So you know, ability to get to the line, um, you know, get to the hole, get to the line. And yeah, I mean, I, you look at it like like uh, David said, you know, it's kind of like UConn the unbeatable force, NC State kind of just hanging around. And it really is like five slam a jam reverse versus, you know, Derek Wittenberg, Sidney Lowe, and Lorenzo Mm -hmm. Charles. Mm -hmm. They broke my heart that night. I was a I was a big, I'm a big Clyde Drexler (laughs) guy. So that that broke that broke me down. But no, I mean I think that, you know, we have a very intriguing final four 
really on both both sides. And, and it's going to be a fun weekend of basketball. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going with the Huskies, um, you know, to, to, to repeat. and Front and runner. The, You're a front runner. <laughs> and be the first since uh, the guy, man. You know, I mean, it yeah, is what I it know. is. But, but what I'm going to say about – what I'm going to say about no oats is, and I think people need it. Coaching is coaching. And that's what Nate Oates is, was talking about with Nick Saban is everything is applicable to a situation if you know how to use it. And obviously Nick Saban is very good at what he does, um, has been. And, and anybody that's in the, in the, in the world of working with, with people and, and teaching and coaching could learn something from Nick Saban. So no, not about it. Uh, Kyle, I mean, DJ Burns, what a story. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, if Charles Barkley was around Mount of Rebound, what is he? I mean, 275. I read a story yesterday six, uh, that some of the uh, NFL scouts are looking at him. What yeah. His, what his coach said, he had ballerina feet and a grizzly bear body or something. You know? Well, uh, that I, guy's I, a wonderful story. I think he would be the biggest guy, one of the biggest guys in the NFL. He's like 6'9, 280. Um, but yeah, no, I, I listen to, uh, the sports podcast every week and they actually had DJ Burns on and, uh, Jake Golke, they had DJ Burns and Jake Golke. Golke was the, uh, he was the shooter for Oakland that, uh, knocked out Kentucky and it was just kind of cool seeing their point of view and, uh, everything like that. But DJ Burns is also, I mean, he's one of the most likable guys, um, in the whole tournament. I mean, he, he's just got... I mean, even his coach is just saying he's got an infectious personality that kind of just is contagious to everyone else on the court. Um, but, yeah, I, the the Final Four on both ends, uh, women's and men's, is absolutely electric. Um, Connecticut, obviously, I, I think if you're a Gator fan, you kind of got to root against them mm-hmm. going for, uh, you know, that the 06, 07 team is the last to go back to back. Um, but. I think that, uh, you know, if anyone can bring him down, it would probably be Bama with the shooting, being able to just kind of – they're able to knock down as many threes as they can. And they have uh, many Jalen Brunson and, and, and Mark Sears. Um, and then on the other end with uh, – I mean, Zach Eady has also been – he's averaging like 30 and 16. Seven foot of, four. And, I mean, every way – I've seen so many things about how – it's very boring basketball. It's not fun to watch all this. It, yeah, it might be super boring, but they're winning. <laughs> it, 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 but it, he's averaging 30 and 16. It's, you know, it's crazy. And, I mean, Dalton Connect had probably one of his best games of his uh, of the season. He had 38 points, and, you know, Edie, Edie matched it with 40 and 22. So, um, I think, you know, if any, any of these matchups this weekend is going to be super cool. And uh, the Klingon guy on Connecticut, he's seven two, and he's just, I think, um, who did they just, Illinois. Every single shot, they, they, they were 0 for 19 when Klingon was um, contesting a shot. So it, there, it's a lot of big men and a lot of, a lot of, a lot of guard play. So it's going to be really fun to watch. Um, I, I, I don't really know what's going to happen. <laughs> no, you don't have a, you don't pick, you have a pick in this. If I were to make a pick, I think I, I don't want to choose UConn. I'm going to go with Purdue. I think Edie's just going to bore bore the United States to uh to the to the championship. <laughs> he goes up against Burns, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, he goes against no, Burns, that's, that's and then I, I I think that UConn. I mean that I don't know if you guys were watching the Illinois game, but that 30 to 0 run, I've never seen anything like that in college basketball, especially on that that stage. So. Um, I mean, Danny Hurley, I mean, he's just a unreal motivator and I think that he's a great coach. Yeah. And, uh, he was talking today about how, you know, that they just felt disrespected the whole season. They weren't getting enough media coverage for being, you know, basically winning a national championship and dominating the rest of the season. And they're yeah. still not getting prime time slots. So he, I mean, he, the defending national champ has a chip on their shoulder. Um, I just think that, you know, that's a, that's an all time motivator, and that's a, mm-hmm. that's kind of what you need to be a good coach in March. David, you gotta love JD Burns. Oh, who wouldn't? You know, for you, <laughs> loves, for, for you, everybody but... loves. A, you know, I won't call him a fat guy, but a big guy, the Santa Claus, a big guy. And he's and he's got the, the personality to go with it. He just seems, seems like a likable kind of kid. Goes out there and and he plays that you know that that fun game, you know, banging and, and stuff. So yeah, he he could be the 
the breakout star. You know, it, it would be interesting, though, if it is a Purdue UConn final, uh, you know, where, you know, two, two teams that really don't move the needle, you know, uh, and and how if that's the final and the women's final the next night is is uh, Iowa against South Carolina mm-hmm. to see who the, who the ratings king who wins that ratings yeah. battle. You know, my money would be on the on the Tuesday night game. I guess it would be. Yeah. We could also get a UConn cool. NC State both ways. No, no, we could get UConn yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> that, that would be crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It'd be crazy. But, yeah, it, but if, if ever the, the women are going to outdraw the men, this is the year they're going to do it. Amazing. Uh, last couple of minutes I want to use for a little truth serum time, okay? And I want to confess to you, I'm d- checking myself here, and I want you guys to help me through this. I did the show this morning on, uh, with uh, uh, on, uh, Shane's show. We talked about the status of things in Gainesville. I mean, let's be honest. I'm not in Gainesville. I don't know what's going on. Guys like you, especially Kyle, you're around it. But I was asked a question about what's going on in terms of – and I said, number one, I said, I hope the baseball game team can finally win some midweek games. And I guess they did tonight, Kyle. They finally beat Florida A&M, right? Yeah. Uh, And I said – and and I'm expecting more out of the softball team. And I, I got raked over the coast. What do you mean you expect them more out of the softball team? They're 35 and one. Well, I expected them to be a championship team, and they lost a couple of the games. Well, you're winning. I got ripped for that. I thought, when you guys said, <laughs> Buddy's out of touch. He didn't know what's going on. I didn't, I'm not a softball beat writer. <laughs> I'm just watching the game and reading the stories and thinking, well, I think Tim Walton kind of thought like this is a team that's going to have a chance to win a title. And the times I've seen them, like they're wrong, they've had some oopsies. So I know maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I need to be more educated. Educate me, uh, Kyle. Tell me what's going on here with the baseball and softball team, and then go around the horn and help me get over this up. Yeah, so, all right, baseball tonight. Obviously, there's been a midweek slump going on. Uh, We finally got over the hump tonight, though, um, with uh, 10-7 went over FAMU, I should say. Um, And, you know, we haven't lost a series, a weekend series all year. Um, and I think it's really just comes down to a young bullpen and Sully's still just trying to find that, you know, correct kind of rotation, um, who we, who he wants pitching on the weekend, stuff like that. Um, you know, Ryan Slater started tonight. He only went two innings and allowed, I think five runs, but, um, I, I, I think that we have a golden spice winner and, uh, I know it's early, but Caglione has just been off the he rails. bomb tonight, apparently 491. It, the longest one of his career, uh, and he should have had two. He had one that was 119 off the bat and literally probably a foot foot away from being a second home run, and it ended up only being a single. Um, but, I mean, and also, you know, hitting, he's also been pitching. I think he's, pitching you know, well. three or, yeah, three or four and oh and on the year yeah. and with an unreal ERA. Um, you know, I, he's probably the lead for the Golden Spikes this year. And I wouldn't be surprised if he went, you know, top three in the draft again. And um, so baseball, you know, a lot of people are freaking out just because we're losing these midweek games. Right. But but really, it's I don't just, like it I, either. By the way, I, I'm it's, not. A it's not. It, I mean, it's not. It's not fun to cheer about. But I I, I don't think it's anything to really worry about because you know it, it, it's a lot of young pitching coming in midweek. We're not pitching any of our main guys on the weekends, or or we are pitching our main guys on the weekends, so we're not pitching them during the week. Um, you know, Blake Pornell came in tonight, pitched well. He pitched strikes. That's what he does. Um, so I don't think baseball has anything to worry about. Um, and softball-wise, I don't know if these guys can help me out, but from what I've seen, um, you know, they've dropped a few games. But I, I know we have a big-time transfer that came in from Oklahoma who has been playing super well. And uh, I think it's a, a veteran team that, you know, and that's what you kind of want in these postseason type of things to be able to make a deep run. So, um it's definitely exciting stuff. And gymnastics postseason is coming up. Yeah. All right, Lauren, coach me up and let David finish it off. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, yeah, softball's uh, thirty-one and five. So uh, yeah, they're pretty good. They're ninth ranked in the country. <laughs> they lead the SEC in hitting, uh, and they are third in the SEC in pitching. With their top two pitchers are true freshmen. So. If there's Achilles heel for that, so I'm going to say they're doing pretty good. 
But if there's an Achilles heel for that team, the pitching has been roughed up a little bit, um, but they hit so well that they've been able to overcome. Um, they they basically, um, their last six games, they, they run ruled Kentucky three straight games, which is what you should do. But that was a ranked Kentucky team. And then they took two out of three against Mississippi State at Mississippi State, where they had to kind of depend on the hitting. The pitching kind of was shaky. And then the week before that, they took two out of three at Alabama. So, I mean, I think that Tim Walton, Tim Walton said this is probably his most athletic team that he's ever had. And it could be his most, uh, his best hitting team. And based upon average right now, that that's true. Now they've got a big series this weekend with LSU. And uh, right now they're, they're ahead of LSU. I think LSU is fourth in the SEC. So it could shake up the standings a little bit, but uh, that's going to be a big series. It's a Saturday, Sunday, Monday uh, series in the, at that KDC Soul Presley uh, Stadium. But I would say right now that, that softball is right where, I mean, with the youth that they have, and then Kyle mentioned Jocelyn Erickson, who uh, right now is drawing uh, comparisons to Aubrey, Aubrey Monroe. I think she is 13 out of 14 on catching um, – uh, runners, base runners. So, I mean, she's got a great arm. She's a lefty and she can, she can hum it. So um, she, she had a big grand slam to win the game on Sunday at Mississippi state and she's got an arm. So uh, yeah, she's, she definitely should throw you out if you slip in at first base. And um, you know, she really, Patty Gasso did us a favor by not letting her catch at Oklahoma. They played her at first base at Oklahoma, but um, she's really been she does a great job of managing that that pitching staff and she's hitting the ball, too. So, uh, you know, softball is going to be just just fine. They're in good shape right now. David, do I have to turn in my card for not being more positive? Am I out of touch? <laughs> uh, I would always answer when something like that with sort of sort of the nebulous. I think they got a good chance later on. They get their act together. No, no. Here, here, here's my favorite word. Time will tell. Time, time will tell. Time. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Stay tuned, baby. Stay tuned. <laughs> I, I will. I will say this: as long as Cagliano's out there, baseball is going to be worthwhile. I mean, he is. He, the, the way that, you know, he has elevated his game from last year. Is he the greatest know. baseball player in Florida history? Well, if he keeps Ooh. this up, it's going. You know, he's going to have as good Ooh. cases. Uh, who's better? You know? Right. Right. I mean, he, he is. He, he is. Uh, he is Shohei Otani without the interpreter. You know, and that having to do with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot more money too than he's got. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so anyway, so, so set the tone and for the good night message, David, and tell us what we should be positive about and what, what the future is looking like and what the vibe is right now. You're in games. So give it to us. Mm -hmm. uh, big picture. I think, you know, it's good. I mean, Florida's always good in spring and, and, you know, but so much is judged on how they finish, you know, so we'll see with the, I mean, all, all these teams are worth the, the price of admission and going out there just to enjoy a nice spring night or you know, on the weekend. Mm -hmm. Everybody does it. I mean, this weekend in particular, it's interesting because Florida is hosting, as uh, Kyle mentioned, the uh, NCAA regional mm -hmm. gym, gymnastics, which hadn't happened in a few years. Uh, and it's funny with gymnastics, you know, they've uh, they, they've sort of like been the the, the odds on favorite to win or, or be up there. And, and, and so the pressure has been on the last couple, but this is a team that doesn't have the pressure yeah. on them. I mean, nobody expects, expects them to win it all this year. Uh, so it'll be interesting because they, uh, I don't expect it, but yeah, I, I, I do think it'll be disappointing if they don't get in the top two this weekend, but yeah, it's going to be a, a fun weekend because that, that regional goes Thursday, Friday, and then Sunday. So there'd be a lot of gymnastics and baseball teams out of time. They, they ought to, you know, they're going to Missouri and, and that, that smells like sweep because Missouri's pretty weak right now. Smells like what? Oh, that smells know. like a sweep, you know. Uh, uh, that is, so, that's so, yeah. How's that smell? Anyway, okay. Yeah. That's, that's a good, <laughs> maybe, that's a good maybe, smell. Get that going. Yeah. So, so I, I, I think it's all good, you know, pretty much right now. And, and as I said earlier, you know, football, April 2nd, if you can't be mm -hmm. feeling good right now, you know, you're not going to feel good anytime. <laughs> I think yeah, you just said. I think you said time will tell, David. Is what you really said. Yeah. Time will tell on, on all this, except except for Cags, because he's already told. Yeah, Every time he, he comes up, you know, I that, that, that is that is must see TV. Hey guys, great job! Thank you so much, all three of you, for being on tonight. It's always a pleasure to have you on. Be well, Kyle, Lauren. Thank you, and David. 
Read you and be reading you in the uh, Gainesville Sun. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, night. guys. Have All a good right. night, guys. All right. Thanks very much to, to the team there. We'll close out the program saying thank you to our sponsors tonight. Of course, uh, we uh, Boots Melvin Law and, uh, and uh, Titan MRI. Of course, these people here who are so special to us uh, in a personal way, as well as uh, our neighbors and friends and folks that have supported us for a long, long time. And we do appreciate all the things that Red Star Medical Research does for us in the community. Uh, and they count on you a lot uh, as uh, as partners in this thing because they need your help in terms of volunteers. And their clinical trials are so important to our health. Uh, and how you can help is volunteering to take part in those. Go to rentstar.net and find out more information. But um, clinical trials exist because they need new therapies. And the safest way to get those introduced to our community is through these trials. And they wouldn't exist without you. So if you volunteer to be a part of it for Rentstar, you might be receiving study-related medications and procedures at no charge to you or your insurance might gain access to new investigational medications or devices that are not otherwise available on the market, and compensation for time and travel. So check out Renistar Medical Research, Seeking the Mars Answers to the Health Questions of today. Have a great night, folks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Back tomorrow night with, well, Sweet and Sour and Dave and Nelly.